it's a beautiful day for poetry. The sun was out. Which was a good sign. It's kind of still out, you know. We are the sun. And I want to express my gratitude to Emmanuel Xavier for extending the invitation to Kyle Danswitz from the Madison Square Park Conservatory, to Teresita Fernandez for her beautiful work. I don't know how she does it, but it's amazing work. But I like the concept of increasing our visibility because we are in a society where that conspires to keep us invisible and we resist and we fight that. And I want to express my gratitude to all of you for coming out and joining us here tonight. I feel greatly honored. Oh, oh, oh yeah, me. Que mi espíritu habla y está bailando aquí. Me dijo una cosa. Y lo voy a decir aquí. Me dijo que la gente nacieron a ser libre. Y encontrar profundamente lo que es sentir vivir y mi espíritu baila mucho aquí mi espíritu baila aquí en un ambiente colectivo mi espíritu baila aquí. Puerto Rican discovery number one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was light, and the light became sound like the universe exploding. It came, took form, gave life, and was called Gonga. And Conga said, let there be night and day, and was born el quinto y el bajo. And quinto said, give me female, there came campana. And bajo said, give me some, there came bongo, says. They merge, produce force, maracas y claves, chequere y timbales. Que viva la música. So it was written on the skin of the drum. Que viva la gente. So it was written in the hearts of the people. Que viva raza. So it is written. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay. So this next piece that I'm going to do is um, was, uh, was born on the day when my mom told me the story of the day that I was born. And, um, and I was in my late 20s, and when she revealed to me the circumstances of my birth, I then, you know, like a lot of things fell into place. Um, so half blue feet first. She battled into the world, hardly surviving the blood cord twice wrapped tense around her neck, hanging, womb pressing, pushing, pulling life from mother's child, fragile flesh emerging, perfect in blueness like the lifeline that sustained her yet 
limp, almost a corpse. Her mother claims the virgin interceded, invoked through divine promise and prayer that caused her dark eyes to open, her tongue to taste air like fire as blueness faded, tracing death on the tail of an eclipse. And as in birth from her darkness, the free giving sun inch slow to visibility, revealing all color and form, a great teacher, generous and awesome, silent and reverent, loud and blasphemous, constant sculpting edges of definition in the shadow and light of multiple universes. Half blue, feet first, she battled her way. The world did not want another brown, another slant-eyed olive Indian black child. Did not want another rainbow-empowered song added to repertoire in blue or azure or indigo or Caribbean crystal. Did not want another mouth to feed especially another rock the boat poet, another voice open wide, fixed on a global spectrum of defiance. The meaning of war defines her, gasping and innocent before she knew her mother. before she discovered herself, barely alive, gathering weapons into her being with each breath that filled her, growing stronger, determined to beat all the odds. As much as I appreciate this, this lovely little light that Emmanuel put here, it, it was staring into my eyes. And my eyes are sensitive to light, so, okay. Um, this, next, this next poem was inspired by Occupy Wall Street and the 99%. It's called Ode to Being Alive. And the odes are inspired by Pablo Neruda, who, you know, a wonderful poet who wrote a whole collection of odes, of lovely odes to ordinary things, things you couldn't imagine ever creating an ode out of, but yet he did, he managed to do that. You are more than flesh and bone more than circulating protons and neurons, more than a mass of ganglia and corpuscles rushing through your trembling heart. On your urgent mission to join the expressways of restless multitudes on subways in the daily crunch to sit behind desks, push buttons, work copy machines for the landlord, electric company, banks, and latest fashions. You are more than that heap of bills to be paid, more than your collection of lifeless objects, European furniture, flat screen TV, cell phone and laptop, more than your scores of books on endless shelves waiting to be embraced. You are much more much more than the greedy war machine that plows the earth, ruins the rainforest, hydrofracking the water to drain the global life force for profit and gain. There is a part of you that is greater, that cannot be seen or touched, bought or sold, collected by any bank or sales company. The essence of you cannot be owned or enslaved. Your eternal spirit, fragile and precious, is a gift 
housed within you, the real treasure of you that blossoms and wilts from the darkness of self, that connects one to another like a grain of sand in the vast ocean of being, or a star in the constellations of galaxies adrift in cosmic space. We are so much more. So since I knew everybody was going to be bringing their political A game to the, to, the, to the place, I thought I'd do something a little different. And I want to thank all the wonderful poets that I heard tonight. Emmanuel is fabulous as always. I mean, the way he read my bio, he, he, I never heard anyone read my bio like a poet, you know, like a poem. And that was kind of interesting. And, and I want to thank True. I don't know sh if she's still here. She was wonderful, uh, a poet after my own spirit, a hip hop poet after my own old school spirit. And, and the wonderful poets from Machete Movement, I love what they did and um, God bless them all. I really wish that they wouldn't stop. I've been hearing them for many years and I, I think that they're a force to be reckoned with. And I, I, I don't know, I think they have a future, but you know, who knows? It's their decision, not, not mine. I have nothing to do with it. Okay, so poems, you know, anything can possibly inspire a poem. And it's usually when you least expect it, you know, you're washing the dishes or, or you're, um, you know, you're cooking dinner and a poem comes to you and you can't stop what you're doing. And, and it, but if you don't write it down or make notes, you know, it flies away. So they're these e ephemeral, ethereal, things these poems are, when they come to us, when the inspiration comes to us. And um, so this poem, the inspiration for this poem came one day I was on the Amtrak going north, and as we came out the tunnel in, after I guess all the darkness in the middle of the, this train yard, in the middle of nowhere, there was this beautiful bouquet of flowers of wildflowers, and it inspired this particular poem. It's called Puerto Rican Discovery Number 44, Wildflowers. And I kind of thought it would be appropriate for today. And here we are in the park, and although the sun has gone down, but that's okay, that's okay. I won't hold it against the sun, you know, I still. Okay, I'm being silly now. On the Amtrak to Springfield in June, through these, these, okay, on the Amtrak to Springfield in June, these wildflowers that grow where no one can see them, blossoming in all their fiery splendor, for whom does their beauty persist? Their brilliant oranges like songs to the sun on hills that hide off the side of the road or near riverbanks where leisure boats reside in their affluent docks. Do these earthly delights grow for them? Clusters of daisies, daylilies, purple and pink azaleas sprout from cracks between rock slabs, thrust from nature's casual abundance. Primroses, sun drops, sweet peppers and hemlocks, dogwoods, wintergreen, shinleaf and princess pines, Indian pipe, beech drops, mayflowers and pinksters, luscious greenery that clothes the majesty of summer in offerings on the altar of spring. By water towers, railroad tracks, grain silos, and farmlands, within dense forests, open fields, tennis courts, and backyards, under billboards, bridges, fences, and power lines, near shopping malls, family homes, lumber yards, and parking lots, mountain laurels, labradors, huckleberry, and calico, Cassandra, rosemary, cranberries, and checkerberries, along churches, shipping ports, dance halls, and graffiti walls, against sawmills, 
wishing wells, station houses, and city parks. In the company of willows, woodlands, wetlands, and truck stops, cows grazing and horses romping, swamp candles, lamb kills, loses strife and blue weeds, creeping and fringed, tufted and narrow leaved, greenness thrives from every space of ground, in silver, olive, jade, and emerald, a wealth of weeds and vines in between dancing twin butterflies, lavenders and chickweeds, mosses and mushrooms, fungus and flora finding their way, following their secret calendars and perfectly timed feasts spontaneous branches reaching upwards and outwards in a dance and communion with life, growing and birthing in cycles of returning, unable to confine the fullness of their being with their nesting and hoarding, their pollinating and harvesting, home to bird families, squirrels, insects and amphibians, tender roots peeking out from the mortar crevices of bricks in defiance that refuses to follow regulations and rules of confinement. Something happens beyond seeing in the midst of these intertwining forms, leafy, random, and carefree in their fractal infinities. Some part of my soul is refreshed, renewed like the moist earth after the rain. All this beauty, this buffet of earth greening, so precious, these gifts here for me, for each of us. And my spirit settles as I breathe and know that we are alive. Thank you, thank you. And I'd like to end with this poem before we bring up our next spectacular poet. Um, it's called Philosophy of the Cool. There is a love poem here, searching to say more than can be said on any page. It is a love song, wanting to sing, waiting to be heard, hoping to be found, yearning to be closer than skin to skin, than air to breath, than mind to soul. It is a heartfelt, heartfelt, heartfelt poem, flies through the atmosphere, invisible and sincere, a drum beat and mountain flute, sweet, sweet music in your ear, the quintessential kiss. It was always here. It will never leave you. It is much more than all these words can describe. In the long list, in the very, 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 ver very long list of important worldly things, there is a great giving, soul-lifting, tender, caring poem that is here, right now. This is all that matters. All you need to know is you are the poem. You are this great love poem here. Thank you. 